The Conceited Nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. What up, what up, what up, what up? We back with another episode of the best podcast you never heard of. Conceited Nobody, episode one to the six. You already know who I am. This is Latouris, a.k.a. The Commodity, a.k.a. Heartthrob Harrison. Uh, we're about to have a fantastic show. We go to a bit of a late start if you listening live. If you listening on demand, we starting right on time. Um, you know how we do, man. I always give a shout out to the, my, to my right hand man. Yeah, I'm aware of authentic. He's trying to prepare my words and stuff. I'm still catching up. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all late. I ain't like a sob, man. You know, a sob walk in 30, 40 minutes late. What's good? Hey, you know, man, he right. up like, you know, Shaheen for 30, 40 minutes late. Yeah. You know, that ain't me. You know, I'm five minutes late. I'm like, man, I knew I should have left, bro. Hey, man, I knew look. I should have left, bro. Ten I'm over here trying up. to turn, man. I got a crick in my neck, man. I got, <laughs> I got to turn all the way to the side like I'm on beefs and butt head. You know, yeah, shit, we, all jacked, we all jacked up today, man. So you don't have to forgive us. He over here. Nah, yeah, I got a crick in his neck. Over there looking weird. <laughs> I, I'm, never, I'm never late like this. Maybe. So this is just like we all jacked up today. But it's all great. We don't get, we don't get into it. Man. But that's the man Renaissance Juvie up in here. And then we got to my uh, right sitting in between us a special guest. Uh, I spelled the name wrong, and the mm-hmm. I didn't put the extra e on. I definitely go back and redo it on the edit. I was trying to say if it was an S or a Z. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. that's cool. All yeah. this extra cool. No fancy stuff. Yeah, it's like no special. Okay. No special. No special. Yeah. Jasmine V, actress. Uh, how you doing? Yo, yo, yo. Oh, good. How are you? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're about to have a fantastic show. It's been an eventful little week. Uh, just recapping our weekend. First off, shout out to Saad. He out here catching flights and not feeling. Oh, I don't know thought, where he at. Man. I don't know where he at now. Saad thought. He thought. Yeah. yeah Saad. He, he out here tripping, man. Saad be whispering <laughs> to passengers on the airplane, talking about I ain't got him on drawers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he man, whispering to him. I'm telling you, man. But shout out to Saad though, man. That's our nigga. I think he down in Texas right now. Uh, he said he'd be back mid October. I hope he makes it back for something. We had fantastic plan. I actually meant to share the share the links oh, yeah. before the show. I definitely share them after. Uh, we have it on October the twelfth. Uh, we mentioned it last week uh, our R and B show, Soul in the City, featuring four R and B artists. We got. Allison Victoria, um, Terrence Anderson, Jamal White, and Cambria. I don't even think Cambria has a last name. He's just Cambria. He just Cambria yeah, right? like Madonna. Yeah. Um, we had him on day four. <laughs> fantastic show. It's uh, October 12th, uh, 6 to 10 on Icon. Man, it's going to be a fantastic show, man. We got a couple sponsors right now. We have CBA Promotions, Valid. Um, and Pride Design Studio. We got sponsorship packages for anybody interested in having their brand attached to what is going to be a very um, a dope That's event, true. man. Nobody really opening up R&B show type things for local artists. It's all everything seems rap orientated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I feel so fucking stupid, man. Oh, trying yeah. to turn and look at you oh, and shit. You don't, man. <laughs> but we we go, it's, it's gonna be dope, man. Too, but it's cool. <laughs> You said what? That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to act like I'm right. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's going to be dope, man. I, I haven't really gotten my groove. I'm ready to get nervous about things or whatever. It's going to be dope. I think you're um, going to hit me. Say what? I think you're going to hit me. Yeah. You said I hit you? Yeah, you yeah. made it. You know, it should make it off. Do you know? But we, we're going to get Joe to host it, man. We gonna get Joe. We was gonna do a co-host with him and the polished lady, but we can't have both them motherfuckers that they looking like. One rough motherfucker at a time, goddamn. <laughs> hey, hey, but it's gonna be dope, man. More information come. Be looking out on the page and stuff for uh, more share information. Like I said, we are looking for sponsors. Um, I don't, I don't hit people up, man. They just left me on red, and I think that that the. Uh, the picture I said is, is niggas don't feel like reading. 
I think they just, I got to explain, hey, this is a sponsorship pack. Who yeah. I sent you? Because they just left. Yeah. I know at it, uh, people just can't be that useless. I refuse to believe people that useless. Uh, this past Friday, we had the pleasure and privilege of hosting uh, Americans Release Project. She had a nice show. Um, who all? Her, C Dub, Von, what's his name? Bonnie Traps. Bonnie Traps. Bonnie Traps. And Nori the Great. It was a pretty decent turnout. They was they was there for her. Yeah, they yeah, was yeah. only there for her. They wasn't rocking with nobody else. C Dub got them up off their feet. C Dub yeah. had them out there jumping. She had a good show, man. She had not just she, everybody had a good stage presence. Yeah, yeah, what was your what was your yeah. thoughts of the show? Man, I thought it was an overall, like I said, she picked a good um my thing is she picked some good artists that was like catered to her uh crowd for the most part and then like uh they opened up they opened up for it pretty well, like you know, wasn't nobody just like it opened up well, like Bonnie Trap did his thing, it was a little mellow, but he really did have a lot of energy in his performance mm -hmm. and that's kinda like the same thing that America was gonna bring you later in the night by the same type stuff where you gotta listen to what she's saying. But then you had the energy in between you got uh Nori Go and uh um It's Nori Go, I call him a great didn't it? Uh yeah, nice. yeah, in order to go and uh, that's his name, right? Yeah, in order to go, yeah, I see. In order to go, and then uh, you know, C Dub, C Dub, man, you know, this C Dub guy in the crowd, so they really that was a good uh, that was a good music, that was a good show, man. That was a good show. Um, I, what I hate about shows like that, man, how the crowd has no energy until the person they come to see. It's damn near be disrespectful and shit. Like, yeah. just us hosting and shit, man. I want I didn't like the sound system. Like, I didn't feel like the mic was on. I feel like I was talking. That's why I, I felt like. I, I feel like wasn't nobody fucking with me. Yeah. I feel like they wasn't listening to me. And she was like, yeah. I got something to say. We all listen yeah. to the fuck I'm saying. Um, I, of course, I always It say wouldn't I, have been that bad if the sound system, if you, like, the sound system was right. Yeah. And then it's like, you could hear yourself talking to them and saying what you were saying to yeah. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been that bad, but you like. I'm wondering, can like, they hear me? <laughs> I'm wondering if they can hear me. Yeah. And, it's like you substitute like, teacher. I start talking shit, but it's like, you see, what was guy you hear me? I feel like a substitute teacher where nobody paying attention to. Yeah. Niggas chewing gum, throwing paper, spit, spit balls and shit. I'm already uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm already out my fucking hell. I've never seen none of these people in my life. These are not my friends. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm conceivably in the top 10 oldest motherfuckers in here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like fucking Will Ferrell on old school or some shit. Party with these damn kids. Shit, Good way to get the fuck up out of there. <laughs> he was the host, so he was the best position. Hey man, I, I wouldn't have no other reason to be here. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to get up out of here. I don't think, like, they had vendors there too. Shout out to the vendors. Yeah, me and I had a I think I spent money on like three vendors. There. I. Theoretically, it sounded good to have vendors at a fucking show, but after I got there, I said, what the fuck are they doing here? Yeah. And when I say that, because vendors be looking so, you ever go to an event where people selling shit, they ain't selling shit? Like, they just sit there and shit, wait for somebody to come and buy one fucking earring. Yeah. <laughs> they be looking so fucking you lost, man. somebody, because cause the crowd wasn't really there. They weren't fucking You know what I mean? So, it's like, they really could have went and hustled. You know what I mean? Like, they could have yeah. went mingled a little bit, like, hey, I got this. You know what I mean? That's, that's just wait for them to come over there. Hell like, yeah. like we was like, okay, these got this group of people up here, this group of people over here, and then the rappers, and then you got us telling everybody to come together. You know what I mean? Like, hey, go listen. play with them. Yeah, y'all yeah. go play with them. Hey, everybody come come play with each other. So you just say, was not fun. Like, I, I feel sorry for yeah. the band there. I'm like, that motherfucker ain't sell one vape. <laughs> Whatever CBD <laughs> is, I don't know what this. <laughs> I said, you just said one <laughs> fucking thing and you paid to hear this. I at least gave something away with you my could information. You could have just on Google Play. I would have a giveaway. Yeah. You know what I mean? On Capital Stage, hey, can y'all do like a, yeah. you know what I mean? You know something like. Did you get that link? I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel you, man. Like, I, that right there made me never want to invite vendors to nothing. Because <laughs> for their sake, not for mine. But I don't yeah. want you out here looking down on my account. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Table full of everything. You leaving with everything you came with. You know what I'm saying? Except the sunglasses I bought. <laughs> you, you, you a pair of sunglasses lighter than when you got here. But and it's crazy because they had some good shit. They had some shit that you should, you know what I'm saying? That was yeah. uh, purchasable, whatever. Yeah. But overall, fantastic show. We already knew American was gonna do her thing. She got out there, got busy. Uh, we got some fantastic footage. Uh, only thing is, uh, 
I always approached about that for us to be paid for the event. I turned down pay because I believe in loan money. I believe playing chess and all checkers. You don't have to get every dollar handed to you. It's about making relationships and establishing connections. But if I come somewhere, at least I'll give me a fucking bottle of water. Yeah. Give me a fucking bottle of fucking water or something, you man. Let water. me you have. have I gotta man. offer to buy a fucking it. CD. Give me a free T-shirt and a CD, damn it. Don't be around here. What the fuck is this? You gotta. What the fuck is wrong with business around here? No businesses. I say, damn. I mean, it's all learning experience, I guess. Um, shout out to DJ DJ Draft Pick. And that motherfucking nigga just standing by his side, just standing there the whole fucking night. Yeah, is the bodyguard? Hell yeah, look, nah, I ain't like no fucking bodyguard. Nah, I ain't like his girlfriend. <laughs> Shit. Don't stand by me all night, nigga. Throw your hands in there and waving like you don't care. <laughs> what is you doing? But, no, nah, he was cool, though. Um, it was a good set. Shout out to D-Cax. He was out there like a, now that's a sissy. D-Cax was out there. He was his sister's assistant. That nigga, he kept texting me. Kennedy said, Kennedy said, Kennedy said, Kennedy said, Kennedy said, I got some goddamn time to everything Kennedy said because of him, man. Hey, hey, just cut that point Go for shit, man. You heard go for nigga. I'm not y'all go for. I don't work for y'all. But yeah. He was getting busy. Old man shit just got off work at 6 o'clock. I'm I'm tired. I hey, I shit you not, nigga. We got up out of there. I was in bed by, nigga, by 12 30. I shit you know, I was in bed by 12.30, tired and shit, up at 5. Like an old ass man. So what day was that? Friday, right? Friday, yeah. yeah. Look, we done alienated our guests and shit. <laughs> yeah, we gotta bring it all the way back. Let's get into the shows. Let's get into the Y'all know how we do in Paris. We watch Paris. She a fan of Paris. She love Paris. She love Paris. She love Paris. I don't. I'm not a TV person. I'm not a TV person. You gotta I'm not, I'm not a TV person. You watch movies and stuff? Like I do. I do. I get, I get in the movies, but... You don't like into the series? Nah, nah. Nah, I don't. She ain't got cable. <laughs> that's how I ain't got cable response. Everybody with cable, watch First power. of all, first of all, <laughs> I do. But I'm just not a TV person. Oh, really? I be busy. I be busy. Oh, really? So. The EVR for the busy people. That's what they did. They said, you ain't that busy, we got DVR. So well, you say you see any clips or anything like that where you can judge they acting? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've watched it, like, you know, when it first, you know, aired. So, yeah, yeah I, it's I know a little bit about it. It's ridiculous, man. Like, first of all, the acting is terrible. It's not oh, every, everybody part. acting not terrible, man, but it's, I feel like, man, as a whole, it's mediocre. But it's like, uh, but, um, la la. That's her name, right? Yeah, she don't really call her bar character. Yeah, she, she's, she's, yeah, her and the acting scene. I, then, I just uh, can't get with it. Ghost cool. But they, the part they got in, like, the stuff they uh, start having cool. We thought, I thought ghost cool, but this is ghost every episode. Damn it, Tariq. Damn it, Tariq. Yeah, he is. Tariq, what are you, your mother and I. Come on, Tariq. That's ghost the whole I fucking be, episode I every be, episode. I, he, he, I feel like he a good actor with a terrible script. <laughs> like he's writing that shit, man. Yeah. Like I would, I would have told him, like, why y'all got me saying this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I ain't gonna front on him. He ain't no bad. Like, why y'all got me doing this, man? Like it's crazy, cause it, like he damn near look like he can't act mm -hmm. the shit they got him doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. This is a goofy, man. This shit goofy. And, and shout out to Saad. Like Saad said, he he co-signed my sentiments in the show, seemingly being written the night before each episode of recording. <laughs> he said that. Power is like a show that you just watching now because you been watching. You know what I'm saying? You have to keep watching. It's like a train wreck. Nobody wants to see the casualties <laughs> and shit, but you've never seen a train wreck and you yeah, gotta see how it happens. Yeah, yeah. But it's a about some later points. Um what I I didn't catch the girl like when she said to read up, I ain't I ain't catch that shit. At the beginning, um, that I shit. I ain't, I've had to watch the beginning. It's like, I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand the character of the girl. Like, they just start inserting people. Tasha turned to a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? She Where outside. Where come from, dude? They feel they... Who out here leaning on fucking women at daycare? Like, you need protection. Like, it's a corner like, store and shit. Like, the whole, the whole <laughs> thing was just yeah, like, the, man, come on, The man. shit's puzzling, man. I, I don't understand. Uh, we won't dwell on it too much. They just know the power is very... Horribly good, so bad. So basically, I'm not missing anything. Yeah. You missing out on the goddamn conversation? <laughs> <laughs> you you forced us to fast forward. 
Four Sons of the Fast Four Pass, our favorite part of the fucking show. Yeah. But but no, it's like I don't understand that show. Like I when I say I don't understand it, like my biggest shit for one, within the last two to three episodes, I realized that they just this this shit is Grand Theft Auto. This shit is GTA. That's what it is. Cause that the hair brain. Like how in the fuck do you end up how do you end up at the carnival? Talk to the mafia. You got $2 million ransom on your son, and you got 24 hours to get the money. And you looking at you, nigga, y'all, he just killed your girlfriend. Y'all been shooting at each other. And you say, we well, you know, might not be friends, but we're brothers. Man, this is like fucking Charles Bronson in the 80s or some shit, man. I'm, and I see, this is how I feel, man, like I'm not rich. Because I waste my time watching shit like this, trying to decipher it and make sense out of it instead of applying myself to real shit. But it, I can't wait to see it Sunday. <laughs> with that said, <laughs> but uh, Snowfall, you're missing out on that though. That definitely. hard. Do, do you have any TV shows that you ever like? That you ever had time for? See, the things that I like is like Stranger Things. Who got you in the act? I mean, we fucking well, Stranger I'm Things. Like, I'm like, I'm trying to I talk like stuff like that. Make me think, you know, I, yeah. That's one, that's yeah. one, yeah. that's one of the Netflix oh, shows. It's, it's off the chain. That's one of the, the writing is amazing. For what? Stranger Things. You ain't never seen that. As a matter of fact, y'all need to check that shit out. That's one of uh, one of my binge binge shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you would like that shit. I think it's been. You'll look seasons. up and you will watch like five episodes. It's oh, yeah. three seasons. Like, yeah. It it remind me of Stranger Things. It got that coming of age group of teenagers set in like the eighties. Oh, okay. It's oh, like yeah. that. It's if you like, but you gotta like sci fi type shit. You have to like it a little bit. Yeah, right. It's it's a good ass series. Um, actually, I think it's probably one of the most profitable series on Netflix. As far as making money and generating, like yeah, it's one I hear of, a lot of people talk about it. It's cool, man. It reminds me of some old Goosebumps shit. Always <laughs> coming up. Like yeah. I thought, like I thought it was attached to that, but no. I fuck with Stranger Things. Uh, mm-hmm. What show you like on Netflix? Yeah. Um, well, there's a couple movies that I checked out. Transcendence was a good movie. It had Johnny Depp in it. It, it is uh, terribly non good acting ass. What? Oh wow! Johnny Depp used to be fantastic. He's a fucking joke, man. He's Are you elf. serious? He's right a now? typecast. He's a typecast. He do the rock, every, he do the uh, baby when he started doing too many Pirates of the Caribbean. I didn't even like that. It was corny, the but first, I liked the first, it. The first, the first yeah. couple, but it's like he it corny, now he, he yeah. he's always over the top. He's over the top acting like in the Zorro. But that's what shit. makes him though. Nah, what made him was like good shit. Uh, Eric Edwards said this in the first, the second, yeah, uh, Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street type shit, when he was more subtle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The the story where he was a writer and shit, and he was, I forgot what it was, but I used to be a big fan of uh, Johnny Depp. He corny as shit to me now. No. <laughs> that's, that's just me. But you transcend it. I've seen clips of that shit. I ain't never watched it, though. <laughs> what, uh, what was that about? What, the transcendence? Yeah. So just AI, artificial intelligence, like he was able to create this mastermind robot to operate, you know, uh, just ar- artificial intelligence. He ended yeah, up passing over. away. Huh? You ended up taking over and killing people with some shit. It, 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 it got, in, it got intense. <laughs> That's how it was able to, yeah, it was enhanced to where it could do. That shit predicted lot. programming. <laughs> I mean, they're, just, they're, showing, no, they're showing you shit that they really got under wraps. And I shit. know. I believe it. They, they, I they believe really that. Them androids and shit. I remember it was all the crazy niggas mm-hmm. trying to fuck androids and shit a couple years ago. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Speaking of actors, probably the best actor we've seen who did. He made a lot of money. He didn't um, get any Emmys, Oscars, or anything to that sort. But he did get a lot of niggas locked up. Takashi, what is your thoughts oh. on the whole Takashi? Oh man, that shit is painful. That shit, it is. It's painful because like, like man, he like he really like 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 he and I'm gonna put it like damn like this shit is serious. Man, he's serious. Like he's serious. Dude. Like he's scared. That shit is crazy. And then the uh, dude, then they just get dude uh three, they getting three life sentences. Who the head uh. Nah, nah, I don't think nobody got, because Shoddy, I think he had like 15. Man, hold on, man. Did a male murder, nigga. He copped that. Oh, it's crazy, because it's more than Takashi just telling or cooperating to a sin. People always say, I don't like how people empathize and start crying a little boy. Me, 23. Niggas was getting killed when they were 16 for whistling white women. You know what I'm saying? So I don't like how they empathize particular people. 
he, 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 he was 23 he fucking years yeah. old. You know what I'm saying? Very, very year and talking shit, especially in a breakfast club interview. He's very self aware. Yeah, he know smart. what's going on. Yeah. Very intelligent. Smart. Very intelligent and manipulative. Yeah. You can see. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be real if very I didn't say this shit. I wouldn't be real if I didn't say this. He flipped in less than 24 hours, he said. It had to be something very compelling for you to tell him in less than 24 fucking hours. A lot of people say he's already in contact with the feds. But this is the thing right here. I'm going to say this. Whether you got caught in school doing some shit, you got caught by the law. And you was faced with the opportunity to tell. Whether you did or not, you thought about it. It's crossed your fucking mind. Yeah. And then you weighed out the situation. Like, no, nah, I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just take the time school. Yeah. The thought of telling the shit, that's not alarming. Yeah. But the actual telling is alarming. Yeah. You hear the audio? Yeah. Street shit is street shit. But when y'all kid that me, don't expect me to get here and not tell on you. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all the kid that be talking about killing me and yeah, shit. Hey, I'm Daniel Hernandez. I'm Daniel Hernandez. I don't give a shit about none of that tradeway shit. None of that brim, blood, blood, blue, blue, blue. None of that. Y'all kid that me and y'all was going to kill me. Y'all was going to kill me. I had no allegiance to you niggas. Zero, nigga. Fend for yourself, kidnapper. That's how I feel. I don't give a shit who you are. Niggas with on their fake. They're fake. Listen, once you violate the trust, nigga, there's no rules. Ain't no rules. Me and you, we deal with each other on a fucking high level personally and shit. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a certain standard and shit that we should hold each other to, we should hold each other accountable to. Mm -hmm. If I am violating you by kidnapping you and telling uh, Al Heyman, look, if you want your fighter back, <laughs> yeah, tell your mom, hey, right, we're putting, pasted up little. You know, to cut out letters and shit. If you want to see Kodak Juvie, <laughs> bring me $2 million by 24 hours. <laughs> and don't bring Tommy and Ghost. Shit like that. Once I do that, the bond is broken. So there's no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. would y'all agree with that or am I wrong? No, no, you're right. Okay. You're right. You cross like, certain lines. You know, it's like when you cross a certain line, shit, you cross the line. You feel yeah. me? There's a line there for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So, but the thing is, he was telling, that's the only pass I give me. But he started yeah. telling on his homeboy who went and shot up Chief Keith them for him, the Kuda B nigga. Oh, I didn't hear that. He part. told, he told, and that's his, that's his boy boy. You know what I'm saying? That's his friend who yeah. you said, I need 20 racks if you go shoot up this blah, blah, yeah, blah. Man. And you go. Yeah. You know some, you know, you got motherfucker. Homies, you know what I mean? Because this is now, like, you told one of them motherfuckers, like, you know a couple motherfuckers. You yeah, said they yeah, had yeah. 20 racks right now, they don't gonna shoot some shit up. I so know, it's like, that's crazy. The fact that, you know, he had that kind of power over his homies. Mine is ass, intoxicated, man. man. Just a, go and tell him, man, that shit. Yeah, yeah. Right, Fuck him, though. Fuck them niggas. They so dense and stupid. How y'all let a fucking little ass white boy come in here? Y'all tattoo him up and say you part of the gang and he bring all y'all down from the inside. Mm -hmm. Like, it ain't like he sneak, nigga. You see the white sheep. You see the motherfucker who stand out and yep. shit, who ain't cut. Y'all sit around and talk. And it's crazy. What's crazy is the wiretaps. I don't know if y'all heard them. Well, you see you heard it, that yeah, conversation yeah, between yeah. Shawty and Mel Murder. Yeah, yeah. That shit's sad, man, because you can tell that Shawty kind of figured something was wrong. Yeah. And like a lot of people saying that, and I don't want to, I'm talking about these people like I'm really into this shit. I found all this out today. <laughs> Just from my fucking defense, I do not know these niggas. And generally, I don't give a shit, but for the sake of conversation, one nigga's phone was more clear than another nigga's phone, so you don't got to tap. You know who's working, who's cooperating with it. Yeah. Shit, shit's crazy, man. And after all this snitching and shit, wouldn't it be funny if he still get 41 years? Oh, my <laughs> God. Because it really? was nothing guaranteed to him, man. They need to make an example out of him. If these white people want to save their children, save their future, they need to show them that yeah. you don't take this Daniel Hernandez <laughs> way. You make an example out of him. Give him everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time, man, out here playing with guns and shit. <laughs> uh, man, cream and blood. Well, yeah. Man, what's that shit uh, Rick Ross said? That shit worth 41 years? What? Man, look. Yeah. A lot of that shit doesn't worth shit they get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just a motherfucker who up there just want to say new words that he ain't said in a few days. 41. I ain't said 41 in a few years. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it is. I think he's facing the maximum life. 
But when he'll cooperate, the judge said he's able to go under the mandatory minimum. Some shit, man. The shit's crazy. The whole system fucked up. Yeah. It's goofy. We, you said we were going to talk about it, man. I don't want to dwell on it, but I do want to hit it just a little bit. That Antonio Brown situation. Are you familiar with Do you know Antonio uh, Brown? Yeah. yeah. Being an actress. And we're going to get more into uh, that later. When Antonio Brown is true, he's accused of various sexual misconducts or inappropriations. Allegedly, one lady said, the accuser who came forward second said that while she was over there painting, he was over there having sex with somebody in front of her. While she was painting? Yeah, and she proceeded to paint, so I don't... I mean, what was she... I don't get it. It's a weird situation. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. Like, what's your, what's your, what's your, what you complain about? Like, what were you sitting there painting for? And why? And you had a screen, by the way. Why? Right. Y'all ain't at the fucking park. Right. That's, that's, that's wrong, man. In my house, if I'm sitting down and we all watching TV, and I just whip my dick out and start checking off, you got an option to leave or just sit there yeah. and watch me what the yeah. fuck's wrong with me. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not a criminal. It's not like you just jumped on her and started yeah. in and what happened that fast. You yeah. feel me? It wasn't even her, though. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. So it's not like the shit just started yeah. happening within a split second type shit. It's his house. Know? So it's like. <laughs> and this is the part that I brought. Okay, I'm like, what the fuck? And this is the part where I said to uh, bring it back to you just a little bit. This is on the heels of the popular Me Too movement that I think went viral or super public on the heels of the Howard Weinstein accusations. Howard Weinstein, I think he's a movie producer, something that sort of big time. And it was like so a lot of the things that they deemed inappropriate in certain casting and calls and things like that. I just wanted to highlight that for when we in our line of questioning and when we get to your section. But just real down back, I just want to uh, touch upon something that the uh, C-list R&B singer, Kay Michelle, had said in a recent interview. I don't know what publication it was with, but she said that, quote, I don't think the men are good people, unquote. And her whole basis of this is being not good people based on her feeling like a man cheats on a woman knowing that it hurts her, but they cheat anyway. And she's allegedly in a three-year relationship right now, which is a hell of a goddamn conversation to have when you get home to your no good ass bed. <laughs> like, what are, what are your thoughts on that? First off, Jamar, do you think we're good people? Um, yeah, I feel like we're very good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, what's she talking about? And like, how dare you? About? Yeah, like, what are you talking about? I would have much rather wanted to know what was the context of the conversation before the question was asked. Because I only saw her, you know, her answer, you know, as to what you just quoted. But I, I feel like she was just coming from an emotional state, you know, maybe speaking from past experiences that she probably hasn't healed from. And women are guilty of doing that because we are, of course, emotional beings. So when we speak from that emotional aspect, uh, we haven't outgrown or grown from that hurt or that situation so I feel like she was uh, yes yeah, she's probably been in a three year relationship but she's still dealing with some, some deeper issues I can even hear it in her music although I do vibe with some of her music but you know it's just you know it, it's clear you know that makes sense she said the topic when she was talk, uh it was on a morning show with culture or sorry morning culture the topic when she was talking the relationship with Mickey Memphis Myth hits, whatever the fuck that is, right? Came up calling her to admit her struggles. That's like cocaine, nigga. <laughs> it struggles. <laughs> struggle with her perception of men due to her past interactions, both professionally and romantically. I don't think men are good people. The reason for that is, like, for men to do things that they consider small in the flesh or of, like, cheating, you know that's going to destroy your partner. But you do it anyway. That's not a mistake. We watch the same story over and over again. Hey Michelle, who has a teenage son, coincidentally named Chase, <laughs> says that if she has more children, she wants twins a boy and not twin girls and not a boy. <laughs> this bitch hate her son. That's what they just like. She, she has a hate from me. Yeah, 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 seriously. Listen, I don't want to raise another one. I'm struggling. He took off. Whoa, oh. this shit is pain. 
I should have read this. <laughs> he took off with the white girl and the pro black as we are. I get a phone call from my mama like Chase said he could go on a date with some white girl. I said, okay, okay, we got unity. It's all good. But I did tell him he can go anywhere. But he ran out the house, went there, went on his date. You know, I'm just trying to tell him, wrap it up. You a black person, a black male, you my son. She hate, she hate, she hate her son. Man, it's crazy. So I don't want nobody to look at me and say, who raised that boy? <laughs> now listen, I must, wow. I must, I must digress a little bit. I can feel that, I can feel that a bit. I can feel that. I'm, I'm very pro nigga nigga. <laughs> I'm pro, I'm pro see what you can get out of oh, these black yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, we, we all, you know what I'm saying, was attracted to the green eyes, light skin when we were children, but let's see if we can do that with our own gene pool. <laughs> yeah. But it, this, this right here painful though for her to like, how does she look at that shit like I'm raised a fucking loser? Cause that's how she, she when you say I want girls, like she don't want men around her at all. She's very fucking. Like, what do you consider her? Well, the thing is that women carry women carry situations or hurt, pain, emotions differently. You know, um, some get immune to it. Some some wear it, as in you know what Kay Michelle is doing. And she displays it, unfortunately, well, you know, uh, when she speaks, you know, about her son or her past relationships. You know, I fell into her a certain extent because I've been through some things. And, you know, you just look at, like, first of all, you question yourself. You're like, dog, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? You know, am I, you know, am I the issue? You know, but at the same time, I, I can't account for what she's actually going through to make her you know, feel like or have the mindset that she has because that's super deep. Mm -hmm. When you start looking, because I have a son and like there is no way that I'm going to look at him and be like, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a look. But no, but seriously, like I can't look at him and blame him for <laughs> things that I've gone through or experiences that I've had with me. But that that's a whole nother level of like Man. pain and hurt. You know, that's, that's, that's like I said, we, we all wear it differently. You know, you know, like I said, there are some that will kind of dwell within it. Some people will, you know, kind of rise above it. And she just has it. And Me. I think she's come so complacent and comfortable where she is to where she's displaying, you know, or, um, you know, she's including her child in that. Do you think that she feels like a martyr in the sense that, uh, for, for one, do you think that some women, like lean on that aspect too much that I'm emotional. Like we know you're emotional and stuff, but do you think some people hold on to that much like it's a past? Oh, yeah, they use it, it as a crutch. No. Yeah. I mean, I look, listen, you know, I'm not down in no woman going through anything. No, you know, don't use it as a crutch. You know, when I when I've had conversations with friends or, you know, family who've gone through stuff, don't and you know, I tell them don't use it as a crutch. I've been there. I've I've used things or situations or people as crutches. And, you know, once you realize, you know, what it's doing to you or, you know, you're not bettering yourself, you know, that's, that's when you got to make that change. The thing with that is, though, like, on for her dude, man, like, how the fuck do you feel? Like, you, like, I, I've never seen this kind of shit on this end. Like, I've seen it uh, reversed. Because she, she, cause she, I mean, they still together. Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, well, what the, uh, uh, he's kind of hidden. <laughs> what the fuck? Man. I don't no. know if this exists. I oh. I don't. <laughs> Think she's making him up? I, <laughs> I mean, seriously, like no. out of all her music, what she said. I mean, how, who? What? What he man in their right mind want to be with that? I, you I, can't I mean, raise a man. Yeah, seriously. Like, can you imagine, girl? I, I'm so tired. I can't raise you right. You know what I'm saying? You can't mm. like, raise a man. Like her, her music is pain filled, man, and it's crazy because like she she just I mean for one it's not like she's unique. She has the thought process of a lot of women, so you can't just play her and shit like she just like she just not a woman. Like I always tell like matter of fact I think me and Javar was talking. I told him that. Sometimes women do and say things based off emotion that irritate you, but since they women, you give them a pass. It's only alarming when it's men doing it. So you expect a certain thing. Like, 
But him as a man, he should have told her, don't you ever get up there and say no shit like this on the interview again. <laughs> right. I hear embarrass me. She need to go talk to, uh, she need to go talk to Sierra, man. Oh. Give her some hope. It's still good man out here. Sierra, Sierra man. She know she Sierra. Sierra. Went to the future. Yeah. She went to the future. So, bro, so real. So, yeah. How, you know, how, how much ever as a woman, how great does that get? That's that. That's that rise above. Females hate future, man. They be, they be slandering future, man. They be slandering that man, and she go, "Girl, wrestle with her. Say the thing." She, she like getting women false hope. She gave women hope that you can be ran through and stand up on top, stand on top of all the things you done suck with a lottery ticket in your hand. That's what she did, man. She gave them that kind of hope. She out here. She like she I wouldn't like, say it's false hope. Hold on now. Oh, you can't keep you cycling this same thing amongst That's not entertainers. Cause what I'm saying, she had a she was linked to a lot of celebrities. And I mean, it's so many women in this world. You can only love it's only one Russell Wilson and every rich nigga. A goofy nigga who just accept anything. You know what I'm saying? You around here a Super Bowl champion, quarterback, super paid, talented. And you got but it's the concept girlfriend. though. It's not the money. Yeah. It's not. It, but it's the concept of a man really being in tune with you. I be wondering what made it don't get. What made it don't get her? How right. they just run into each other? Like what, what you mean? Right. What you mean when you say the money part though? I mean, you said it's it's, it's only. No, I'm saying he's with, successful. I'm saying on yeah. his end, not her. On his end, he has to pick a letter. You an NFL quarterback who got all this? You you have di- you got different parties you in every day where you ain't seeing Bow Wow Fifty Cent ex girlfriend, <laughs> a washed up R&B singer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, yeah. How many kids she got? Only two. She only had two. That's not. Mean, but she but she won. I'm she, that's how come. Man, I'm telling you, that's always the only part that I get jealous of when it comes to women. Their ability to win in the most dire situations. I always say, man, <laughs> that the most bummy chick in Indianapolis can go to All Star Weekend and get pregnant by because she took a good shower that morning Stop and it. got a hell of an outfit it. and the eyelashes. Stop it. <laughs> and she go down there and run into some goofy ass NBA player and, and she oops. get pregnant. <laughs> and next thing you know, she on basketball watch somebody he's a deadbeat. <laughs> it happens that fact. It can happen. That's the body of people for women. And we, I've also said, on the other hand, what I'm going to do? Go to the NBA, WNBA game, sit front row next to all these hard angle dykes. Bat my eyelashes, hoping to get chosen by the fucking six foot three point guard. They be in the strip club. So we can split her fucking twenty. So we can split her fucking twenty thousand dollar year check. You know what I'm saying? What do I got? I got. That's why I got pregnant. Who? I got Cheryl Swoops pregnant. Who? Mm-hmm. You know Cheryl Swoops, she was one of the first people in the... Cheryl Swoops, what? What? <laughs> she see an angle? Where she... Mm-hmm. Bitch, you can stay star, nigga, Cheryl Swoops. She was on the USA mm-hmm. Olympic basketball. Olympic team got girls basketball. Mm-hmm. Never mind, nigga. It ain't mine. <laughs> 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 niggas, niggas, niggas cannot hit the lottery like that. Yeah. Look, 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 shout out to Kay Michelle, more and more, shout out to Memphis, look, man, if you getting beat, you need to come talk to us about that shit. Um, <laughs> we were going to talk about Fantasia, man, shout out to Fantasia. I'm going to read the quote she said. It, it, it made a lot of people upset, a lot of women. Uh, she said that, and this was in the Breakfast Club interview, she said, we need more men to stand up and lead the way. Most women are trying to be the leader, that's why you can't find a man. You can't be the king of the house, fall back and be the queen and let your men lead the way. So I salute you, salute you for that. And her um, her comments is polarizing to a lot of these strong I can do it by myself women that seem to just popped up on these social media uh, forums and shit out of nowhere in unison. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. I can do everything, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Until it's time to open the pickle jar. You know? <laughs> hey, 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 nothing that butter knife can't do. Hey, look at it. <laughs> and butter knife is. Butter knife. Butter knife. The butter knife comes through. I'm going to tell, tell you, butter knife is going hand to hand with dildos. That fucking attitude hey, you have to get along with this shit. Butter knives and dildos. That could be a book. I guarantee you, a bitch, a bitch can write a self help book called Butterflies and Dildos. I mean, uh, butter knives and dildos. On everything. But like with that Fantasia, she they 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 got mad at her. And Fantasia, she she seemed like she got that old school soul though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She coming in and shit. Bitch, be around here barefoot, ashy. 
You know what I'm saying? Washing clothes in a tub yeah, with a little tub washing thing. thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the water boy. Yeah. But but she said that they was on her head. That's what they said. They was on like I caught seeing this on Boston, and they was angry at her. They I was, was like, upset. Like, like, did you see a video of her and her dude? Her mm-hmm. dude said she actually they 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 just in unison. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, with that though, man, like she speaking from a from a place of success. Like the same way we talk about Sierra and shit. Whatever I feel about it, I think bitches go over there. Listen, Sierra got to tell you. That bitch got a secret. You know what I'm saying? Go over there and tell you. See what she got to say. That bitch gonna get you right. Yeah. She's in a successful relationship. Yeah. Fantasia's in a successful relationship. Yeah. So that's who chicks should be listening to. Yeah. You shouldn't listen to a Kevin Shell. <laughs> you know, that bitch got a headache every day. Or yeah. give us by a headache. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I so I don't understand. Do you? Are you a submissive type? <clears throat> So I I do agree with what um, Fantasia came with. I I do believe that men should be that leader, you know, for their woman. Now the whole submissive, I I, I feel like there are too many power trip females today, and we can give credit to the city girls and you know yeah. pe- you know women I like that of that stature. Like it's okay. Yeah, right. And it's over as of the twenty yesterday. First day of fall, yes. First day <laughs> but but no, seriously, like, you know, it's it's too many power trip, you know, mindsets as, as far as, you know, what females possess today. You know, don't get me wrong, I've I've done a lot by myself, but I also crave that old school, you know, the man leads the household type relationship. You know, I I do agree with that, you know, but so the it, thing is, why do you think so many women were against Fantasia and her statement on that? Do you think it makes them feel inadequate? I think some women just like their power. You know, that, that like you said, that independent. I can do it by myself. I don't need no man. I don't, yes, you do. We do yeah. need our men. Yeah. You know, it, it, that, that, that's a hidden agenda, at, you know, a whole other conversation, that, you know, but, you know, that's a hidden agenda of that separation we were talking about earlier, yeah. you know, of the yeah. black man and the yeah. black woman. Yeah. You know, yes, we need our black men. We need y'all. Yeah. We love y'all. You know, we we, we need that. Stop it. But no, seriously, like you know, I it's just I'm just I'm just old school with it. You know, I, and I, I felt Fantasia when she said it. I, you know, that's I didn't. There's a lot of variables that go into it. You think you can just well, take care of your kids, mess that up? You said what? Or is it just going to be like that regardless? You said what now? Child support. What a bullshit. You think you can just mess that up? Everybody just want to take care you know, of your child kids. Support child support shouldn't even be a Child support shouldn't even be a thing. I don't think you should be the government should make a man take care of a child. That's insane to me. Uh, we talked about it. Like, women have too much power when it comes to children. And they do that though because when you give the woman the power over the child, it's easy to subjugate mentally the woman than it is the man. It's easy to get the woman. Look, women, man, women not facing the same. Like I was talking to my buddy one time, I told him that when uh, we was in physical slavery, that the women didn't go through it like the men did. Yeah. It was different, you know, some levels to it. Like the men, you out there getting punched and stuff, beat up, beat, you know what I'm saying? It's just emasculating. Yeah. The women is innately feminine, feminine, so you can't, matter of fact, on a whole nother level, when they talk about people fucking their way to the top, that shit is way different from a woman fucking their way to the top than a nigga fucking their way to the top. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if a man get fucked and she like, ugh, nigga. But a woman, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like two different things and stuff. So the woman is, women are naturally submissive people. You have to impel them to go against the grain. You have to give them a rally cry. You know what I'm saying? A feminist movement type thing. You got to start telling them, well, you should be out here making the same amount of money. You don't need to be working at home where it's psychological because the only reason why they want the woman also working so they can tax two incomes. It's that fucking simple and cut and dry. Yeah. If we just get the man's money, oh shit. But if we get the woman's money too, it's a whole nother thing. Yeah. And they got a taste of that when it was a lot of men with the World War II and women got into the workforce. And so when the men came back, they seen that it was a drop off in the economy because women 
left the workforce so they had any money to tax no more. Mm -hmm. So they like, we gotta figure out a way to, you know what I'm saying, get this shit. It's kind of like segregation integration. They didn't want us to integrate because they felt we was equal. They just know that they want us to spend in their establishments. Mm -hmm. If we just buying black, or we just spend in the black community and stuff, it fucked their economy up. So they want our money with their money and stuff. And it's real simple, but they always gotta put some kind of political uh, twist on it and stuff to make it feel like they care about you, whatever. So the child support thing, man, I don't think it's beneficial to nobody. I don't think it was messed up by nobody. Well, I was just then wondering, like, the basis for the system. It probably was, they probably, you know, crept it in there trying to on that a hidden agenda. But I was just wondering where it stemmed from or where it's like, how the fuck, you know what I mean? You know, of course shit happened. One fucker get pregnant. I ain't mean to get you pregnant. And it's like, you know, or whatever the case may be. I don't know, man. Yeah. You know, I just like, how do you, that's, I don't know, I'm kind of both sides on the fence when it comes to, you know what I mean, Ray? How to, you know, shit trying to... Child support become a hustle for women, not, even, not the child support. Yeah, child, I don't feel like that, you know what I mean? Like, forget the child support You ever see a bitch all day and get ruined because she didn't get that check, nigga? Yeah. You ever see a bitch going, this nigga ain't shit. Bitch, you tripping over the six miles here. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ruins your baby. It's just, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm you know saying? Because it's like you, 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 like, you putting this. Like, they feed this thing. You, Mm -hmm. you going to jail. Mm -hmm. like, what? You got to go to jail? Because it's crazy. It's just too much fucking power, man. I mean, we know a personal situation with this shit, so. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of it's course. real bothersome how you can have that kind of that kind of power and shit with no no buffer. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's the same. the money, I just be sad knowing the part when the dad, when the dad really just chooses yeah. not to just not in. Yeah, I and mean, all type shit. any man that don't take his children, he should be ashamed of himself. But he should be ashamed of himself. We should ostracize him as people. We should say, nigga, you ain't shit to son over there. He can't read. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't you feel stupid? Don't you yeah. feel stupid? You got a stupid son? Yeah. We should be able to make you feel bad like that, but we shouldn't yeah. get a nigga a warrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's just, it's, but what it is, I'm gonna tell you this, and we're gonna move into the uh, interview portion. What it is, when you start putting money on children, mm -hmm. and and it's crazy because it's a scale of how much this little motherfucker worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some people get twenty dollars a month, some people get a thousand a month. Yeah. So it's a scale. It's nothing concrete. Once you start putting money on it, you make the child an object as opposed to a person. Yep. So now I'm paying. For, I'm paying for something. Like I'm, I, I literally, you have become a fucking bill. And I can't wait till you 18. It's niggas can't wait till each other 18 so they get off child support, nigga. It's weird. It's like waiting for something to roll off your credit. And you wait for your child to roll off your credit. <laughs> 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 you fucking oh, up my credit, terrible. nigga. Are like, you leaving your child like, nigga, as soon as you get off, uh, man, it might be a new car. <laughs> uh, that is terrible. But that's how it becomes. So when you make that motherfucker an item and shit, man, you make that motherfucker like, it calls, man, like, I don't even like you that much, nigga. <laughs> I don't even love you $70 a week. You know what I'm saying? I love you about $30 worth, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we was at the gym playing basketball. You couldn't even hit a layup, nigga. What am I paying for? <laughs> what the fuck am I paying for, nigga? Hey, yeah. I'll tell you something, man. I remember, uh, when, probably while my daddy ain't fuck with me. We cool now, we cool now no. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. understand. Probably why the nigga ain't fuck with me. But, uh, I come up to the nigga house one day, right? You know why this nigga? He got me pull out this uh fucking statement and shit. We sit on the couch, chop my shit. I want to smack this nigga in his face, man. I don't know what the fuck is. I got a thousand statements, nigga. Real shit, though. You understand shit a little bit more. You get older, though, don't you? When you get older, you're like, man, I kind of feel where you came from. You know, you look at your mama like, you look at your mama and you're like, man, I kind of see why daddy kind of ain't fuck with you like that, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I understand why you kind of ain't like it. But hey, it's. But yeah, shout out, shout out. We got our guest here, man. Uh, Jasmine, the actress. We met her on the Humbug. I saw her on Instagram, I like network, and I saw that she was an actress. She was in the play with our uh, not too distant former guest who's going to be a part of the show that we have October 12th at Icon Lounge, Soul in the City, Cambria. Mm -hmm. They both were a part of a play. Called them tired of these niggas, they ain't shit. His <laughs> lies are secrets. That's what we call it. His lies are secrets. Her lies, his secrets. Her lies, his secrets. Remember yeah. talking to his mic. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, her lies and secrets, yes. How you doing? 
We already asked you that, but you doing okay? I'm, I'm doing wonderful, wonderful in every way. That's what's up. So you are here from uh, Indianapolis? Yes, I'm born and raised. Oh, uh, uh, what side of town? East side. Uh, east side. Yeah, east side chick with an east side story, you know. Okay. Yeah. So you, how long have you been acting? Professionally, I've been acting since I was about 15. So a little bit over 10 years. Um, that just included theater, film, short films. Um, I've even danced, so um, incorporated some dance into into films, okay. musicals, things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. So, but I've ever since I was a little girl, I was always that kid that, you know, um, my folks wanted me to act out certain stuff. You know, we'll watch Color is, Purple. Well, yeah, to this, to this part. You know, uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of Angela Bassett. Like that's one of my. Um, my go-to's as far as when I, you know, like to study. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So when you, how did you get into it? Because how, you know, it's like to how did I get it, into it? Like um, on a professional level. I'm well. I I had this, I had this English teacher that I couldn't I couldn't stand at first. Um, me and her always got into it. Uh, <laughs> And because I was always late to her class, and uh, I mean, I, shit. I, I you probably yeah. wasn't super late either way. No, it was it was like right at the bell. She See, would a, she would close irritating. the door. That's yeah, she would close the door, and you know, of course, the door was locked, so I would have to wait. Makes me even more late, you know. So anyway, uh, fast forward, um, she taught at a college level. She was my English teacher, but um, she was she was also the theater teacher as well as the debate teacher. So she wore a lot of hats, but. Um, one day, you know, we gone over this lesson. She asked us to kind of um, just to write out a paragraph of what we learned from the lesson. You know, so we turned our papers in at the end of the day. And when she read mine, she cried. And I'm like, you know, I couldn't stand her. So I'm like, you know, so you know, did I say something wrong? Did I offend you? You know, like yeah. <laughs> I'm taking offense. And you know, her words that came out of her mouth was that you got it. You know, she's taught at a, a, a collegiate level, like, you know, um, at Ball State. So shout out to Stacey Embry. She's really my, she's my mentor now. So anyway, um, she asked me, you know, would I be interested? Because, you know, I danced at the time, mm -hmm. you know, so trained ballet, jazz, hip hop, lyrical, all that. So she was like, I want you to do this uh, this musical, which uh, ended up being The Wiz. Mm -hmm. So um, I played the Yellow Brick Road and also the, the Tornado, but that's what, where I started. And you know, I was like, wow, I was like, I really have a love for this. Mm -hmm. So then my passion just kind of, it, it grew from there. So, um, yeah. What did you have to be, like, what was, like, what did you, like, what did you, like, to be in Yellow Brick Road, what did it ever It was, <laughs> so it was interesting because it was a lot, it, everything was moving. You know, everything was in motion. That's what I'm thinking. So, you, said you know, you a tornado, you cry, yeah, going yeah, I, yeah, I was, I wore these crazy. big hammer like, you know, uh, MC hammer like yeah. pants that were gray. They had these, you know, sequences. So I looked like a tornado, you yeah. know, and then as far as the yellow brick road, I had the yellow pants and I would dance in front of Dorothy as, you know, she would kind of follow my moves. So it was very interesting how she incorporated dance. Just, just motion. Period. With, the whole with thing. yeah, it and was, it was so it. dope. It was so dope. So at that point, like, would you say you were bitten by the uh, acting bug? I was. And did uh, you yeah. get a rush? Like when you was on stage, did you get? Was you nervous at all? Um, I wasn't nervous at all. Uh, I'll say my nervousness came in because I, I did pageants as well. That's where my nervousness kind of came in because I, you know, it was more so the attention was on me answering a question that you know involved my opinions my you know really yeah, yeah really being judged as far as uh you know being in you know theater you know people you're, you're just interacting with yeah you're interacting with the audience so um yeah it's, it's it, it just felt natural like i was supposed to be there so when you left when you left this show right here and you figured out like, damn this something i like in your mind, what was the next step? And why, why I asked this, because we talked about the R&B show we got coming up. Okay. And we talk about, like, it's a it's a seemingly oversaturated market as far as when we talk about entertainment, singing, and rapping. Mm -hmm. So the path you're taking is acting, which isn't something that people just sit around and want to be active. We see in the advent of social media where everybody want to do skits and act like that. Right. Where you got to start in theater, so mm -hmm. it's a more traditional sense of acting. 
So, in your mind, what was the course of action to like get more involved in acting? Well, what happened? Because um, after I left high school, I you know I went to college and I started doing a lot of modeling. And when uh, my manager at the time, she told me like even in some of my pictures how I would display certain characters. You know how I was able to. Um, you know she you know she would ask me to give a certain emotion in a, in a photo or you know in a certain setting and I was easily you know able to do that mm -hmm. so it, it just kind of you know it was kind of like a light bulb that went off like okay this comes easy mm -hmm. you know so this this has to be like a passion of mine or you know something that it, it, I would call a gift so um, after the modeling scene I you know I got pregnant you know uh, I, I was uh, actually working with Rashida um, uh, she had like this uh, competition of you know trying to find a spokesmodel for her uh, uh, clothing line at the time. So I was one of the two that was selected, but we ended up getting pregnant at the same time. But anyway, fast forward. Um, Go by the same person. Huh? Go ahead. Stop it! <laughs> really? No, I'm going, going, going. <laughs> so um, um, you know, came back and just started. Um, I was longing for something, you know, I, I, I felt like I was at a standstill for a while, you know, I stopped modeling, I stopped acting, but uh, recently, you know, here, you know, within the last little over a year, I was able to kind of step back into it, and it's just been fast paced ever mm -hmm. since, so, um, it, it, I guess my acting didn't, it, it took a turn, because I didn't expect me to go into modeling, as, you know, as I did, because my passion was on, you know, on the stage, acting, mm -hmm. so, but I, I learned a lot from the modeling field, a lot. And what did you learn as far as, uh, when you mentioned about how they said that you took on like, particular characters in mm -hmm. the pictures, is that something that you learned to incorporate to that? Like when you take the pictures and say you're in a particular outfit, do you, in your mind, become like what that outfit embodies? So what I would do is I, I knew I would want to um, be able to portray different characters or, um, you know, in real life situations. So, you know, for example, if I wanted to do like, uh, you know, um, shoot like a flirty, I, I did like a flirty um, uh, business attire with the, with the tie, you know, uh, the, <laughs> the white shirt, you know, white men. Glasses yeah, in the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, and I was able to give that character off. You know, it, it was more than just modeling the clothes. It was like you're bringing a character to life. How how hard is it you to get to get? I think people don't understand. Like when we see actors and actresses, we think okay, they just read the screen and like. And when we talk about good actors, I said on the show, it's like when you when a person is a great actor, mm -hmm. you start attaching that particular character to them, like. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever seen Scarface? People just come out and see him on Scarface. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You call people, that's Don Corleone. Like, you call them their character. Yeah, yeah. People don't understand, like, how hard it is to get into a character. Uh, I know for a fact that I can't act. Because yeah. I'm, I'm too aware of myself. I'm like, damn, this don't feel right. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk like this. <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't get into a character. I'm like a person who you would typecast. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, damn, he really going to act like yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's how, that's how it be for me. So when you mentioned the different characters that you took on, how do you get into that space? I I think is for me personally, it's not hard getting into character. Sometimes it's hard getting out of it, oh, okay. uh, depending on how in depth that character could be. Like for example, um, her lies his secrets. My character was the lowest. The lowest dealt with um, a lot of uh, past pain. Kind of came Michelle ish. Um, she. Um, it was so bad to the point where um, she adopted kids and her kids adopted some of her bad characteristics um, to the point where she ended up uh, plotting to kill her lover but sending her child to do so. That's how deep her character was um, and as far as revenge purposes. But I think to answer your question, it's, more, it's not as hard for me to get into character, but it's hard, it, sometimes it's hard to pull out of that. Because you have to totally remove yourself. Um, I mean, you can take Heath Ledger, for example. You know, in order for him to play the Joker, I'm sure it wasn't hard for him to get into character, yeah. but it was hard for him to pull out of that as to what, you know. And when you say that, like, what what did you do to get into character? Like, 
Cause I've heard like um, when Denzel did the, um, yeah. well, I, I can't remember exactly which film it was. It was Malcolm one, X was one of his hardest ones. One, it, I've been thinking about the one with where, where it was a demon, the biggest of uh, demon, John Good, and I can't remember. Oh, exactly oh, oh, not falling, is it? Yeah, it's falling. Yeah. But like the, some people say, man, like they, like, try to conjure certain spirits, like they try to, like, allow. Something to take uh, take over, like in in um, writing, it's called automated writing, mm -hmm. things like that, where you allow a spirit to just it, develop. You. Yeah. What steps do you take to like get into a role? Because like like I said, man, I don't think acting is as easy as people think it is. So like, it's what do you not. what do you do to, to in that role in particular to engulf yourself in it? What did you do? Um, depending on the role. Um, you know, I sometimes I will find myself like isolating myself, um, just like um, in the next upcoming show, November second, um, for Color Girls is going to be showcased oh, yeah. for Color Girls. Oh, yeah. So um, my character is Crystal. Crystal is um, she's dealing with a lot of emotional hurt um, with a man that she loves, but um, he's dealing with a lot of PTSD from you know the service and. Um, I don't know if you guys seen the movie. Have you guys seen the movie? Right. Okay, definitely something to dive into. Um, I mean, but I, I think I have seen that movie actually. So he ended up killing their kid, killing their kid. I don't kid. even see the movie no more. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's more, it's yeah. more to it though. But I'm just saying, like, so that type of character, or even, even, even the lowest, like, I had to literally isolate myself, and sometimes I would see you know, my character displayed and when I'm parenting too. So that's how I that's how I know it's kinda it's it's hard to pull yeah. out of it. But um like I said, it just depends. It depends. Like I would I would study, you know, similar characters, um, in other movies. You know, like I said, uh Angela Bass is one of my favorites because she can she can prop she can display pretty much any type of character that you need. So I, I do a lot of studying, do a lot of reading, a lot a lot of isolation. When you when you you mentioned Angela Bass and I was thinking about this earlier. Um, cause in my mind, I always think about like who are, like I have my favorite actors. My favorite actors are like the older actors, the Denzels, the Al Pacinos, and mm -hmm. people of that ilk. Um, but when I when I think like what's my favorite woman actor, and I always think I don't have one. Not to say they're not talented, but I don't focus on the women characters. I know women who can act and things like that. So right. in my mind, I went to like who are some of the best uh, black or female actors. And I knew that the only two that was gonna come to my mind, as far as this generation, they're gonna say it's crazy. Angela Bassett, Nia Long, and not even a talent level of popularity. Of course, we got Cecily Tyson, phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal actress. And then uh, you have your your Taraji P Hansons. Oh yeah, definitely. Who's very overrated? No. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Very no. Why? Why? She she she, she, like she plays the same character. No negative. A lot negative. It's, it's, it seems like it's always Taraji. Yeah. I don't like I don't buy a character. It's like it's Taraji. Yeah. But that's. I, but, I can see what you're saying, but what what was the movie where she so played? Roles are repetitive. I mean, if you're good at what you do, you know, why not hire for I mean, that's, that's like Samuel Jackson. You know, it's like Samuel Jackson. To get it done. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never seen Samuel Jackson do anything outside of hollering cuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a fantastic hollering cuss and motherfucker. So, well, not the Incredibles. Yes, he was! <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> Rose on was Samuel Jackson. What is my super suit? <laughs> He was tripping. Yeah. He really wanted yeah. to cuss in him. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but like as a like as a woman actress, like who are some of the people that you look up to, and not necessarily like black actresses, just any actress in particular that I look up to. Okay, um, wow, there's so many. Um, I I definitely like I, I definitely like Heath Ledger. He he was, um, I I love the way he portrayed Joker. It was like, you know, he set the bar very high. Like I don't I don't think there that could be old, a, man. there could be a, that was yeah old. yeah. That was yeah. Old. I hated on that shit. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I can admit what I was hating. It was like when he had, 
Yeah, it took all them goddamn Flintstone vitamins and shit. I feel like people start overrating. Then when you die, people start overrating. Mm-hmm. Hold on, that's how I felt on some hating shit. Yeah. But when I sat down and watched the fucking movie, I thought, okay. <laughs> they got me. Okay, they got me. They got me. This shit's fantastic. You know yeah. what I'm mean? saying? But go ahead, though. Um, man, there's, there's just so many. There's just so many. Well, what about I, the females in particular? Or do you even care, like, because you don't have, just because you're a female, you don't have to like female actions. Oh, right, true. Because there's no unity amongst women. Go ahead. True. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. but I'm just being serious. <laughs> see, 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 see. No, but like, because if I just sound like think talent, you can think the the usuals and shit. Uh, Bat Mantler type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, what's the, the uh, what's the lady name? Let me quit digging out for these white folks and shit. I don't think she's no goddamn white folks. I don't know these white folks. Because Angela, Angela Jolie can't act to be. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that ugly girl would be trying to be like super pretty. Julia Roberts. She can act her fucking ass off to me. Yes, she can. Sigourney Weaver, too. But it's, it's always the older people for me. Yeah. It's yeah. always the older yeah. people. Like, today, it's always they try to make, like, based on looks and shit. And what they consider pretty just ain't. But. Right. Um, I like Regina King. Regina I like her. King's she nice. real subtle. She she believable, but she she pretty much a type cast too. A lot of Hollywood are type cast. It's only it's a lot of good actors and a few greats. Yeah. What do you like? What are you working on? Like, what's something that you struggle with? Maybe not overtly, but something that you know. Because when you critique yourself, it's always something in yourself that you can feel can get better. What do you feel like is your number one thing that you need to work on to perfect your craft? Wow. I mean, because I always feel like in every, you know, aspect of my gift, I feel like it's something to always be enhanced or, you know, um, could be better. But one thing, um, man, pro- probably uh, remember my scripts. <laughs> like, you know, I'm I'm good about improv, you know, and you know, and I I I tend to kind of throw in, you know, yeah. my own flavor, if you will. So I say just really digging in and really remembering the scripts. And when like, you say that, do you think that <laughs> do you think that it's a lack of professionalism for you not to memorize your scripts? Because I because yeah, I say no. that because it affects everybody on the set. Because when they expect you to come. Up, of course, ad living is good because it adds energy to the scene yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. It gives a little take because when somebody writing and shit, they not right for your attitude. You bring attitude to it, right? But do you think that that's something that affects everybody? It it can potentially if the cast like I mean especially if you're um you know it, it, within a cast that you're not you don't have that chemistry with yeah. yet you know um just like for her last secrets it was easy to do that because we all knew each other we you know we were acquainted. You know, we knew how everybody vibed, you know, because we had been together for, you know, two, three shows. So um, it was easy to do that. But when you're, you know, welcome to months, people that you don't know, it's, it's good to know your script um, and then kind of add in your own flavor to it. Um, I Yeah. Yeah. I would say I would say probably remember my script. Outside of yourself, like how hard, like how many actual directors have you worked on? Actual directors? Mm-hmm. I'll say two. And did you was it two professional? Were any distinct differences between how they approached like was one tougher than the other? Because some people, some directors got like a reputation for being a stickler. You know, say so you have to be on point. And or, that's who you that that's who you want to work with. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're working under somebody who's really lenient, I, I feel like the passion is not there. Mm. You don't want to work with that person. And if, if they're not if they're not constantly on you. Um, you know, or, or trying to enhance your character uh, that you don't want to work with that person at all, because they have like th- their their entire responsibility is you know the, the cast, the whole production is on their hands, so they should have some type of you know passionate you know mindset toward uh, this needs to be right, you know, uh, clean it up or whatnot. So yeah, I wouldn't work under somebody who's lenient because I know I'm not lenient. A month, you know, for myself. Do you read scripts like, or do you, like, like how do you get scripts? Because like we again, it's not like you can hop on SoundCloud, <laughs> grab a beat, you know. What I mean? right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, well, no, I mean you can download 
little monologues. You know, yeah. you ain't gonna get no full, you know, yeah. script or some something. But you know, you can download monologues. But um, also, I just got them like side niggas going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how people audition. You know, you know, you can. So I don't, yeah, I don't know about the acting. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think the people just like, yeah, I don't know how this works. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you can download monologues and uh, maybe partial scripts, but that stuff is yeah, like that's how copy. They it. take you to audition. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. How do you, but how do you like stay po- polished? Like again, we talk about rapping or singing. You can consistently hone. You can vibe with other people because mm-hmm. it's not like it's. Well, I don't know. Maybe you do some improv, but it's like not generally like a group of people just in it. Let's go act. Let's right. go practice. Let's go act like we the brains. Let's right. go. So, how do you sharpen and hone your skills? Um, ran- now I'm exposing myself. Sometimes I randomly, you know, just do certain stuff. Like if I remember a certain part of a movie, I'll just do it. Or you know, uh, some of my friends are they know, uh, or I'll. I'll do certain things or say, a, you know, act out a certain part of a movie. And they'd be like, oh, my God, like, that that was believable. Like, what the fuck was that, you know? So you did the Robert De Niro taxi scene? No. Have you ever done that? No. That's something like everybody would act and say, that's something you would do. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about with that taxi driver? You talking to me? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Now I've been known to bust out some Tina Turner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like when you like when you look at your scripts, mm-hmm. do um is there anything that you wouldn't like consider doing like and it and it like if I was that mm-hmm. I definitely wouldn't do no gay scene. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not holding a hand, I'm not looking intently to another man eye in the sun as the sun rises behind me. <laughs> And burn shirt. I'm not doing that. So you, no, not that. I mean, it's, I it's, is there anything you wouldn't do in particular? There are some things that I wouldn't do, and that's just my personal, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. There, I'm not just gonna do things just for the sake of money or the, you know, the dollar. I'm just, I'm just not. You know, if, it, if I'm not comfortable with it. And this goes back to the Harvey Weinstein question that I wanted to set up for. Now, we know that, and you just said that money is a prime motivating factor. We see that there are a lot of women who are popping up right now saying I had to uh, have sex to get particular roles. Mm. In a situation like that, where it's not rape, you know, punch me, punch me, stung head lock, dog in. It's not that. It's more of the you have what I want, so I'm gonna give you what you want to get what I want. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Because we know that there's a lot of careers that have been built on that exchange. Do you feel like these women are victims or they're volunteers? No, they're volunteers. You know what you get into. We all, you know, we're grown. You know, um, I, I, it's definitely volunteer. You know, and they're out to get what they want. And you know, whether it's the money, whether it's the, you know, the the specific role is it's volunteer. And with situations like this, because I've seen I've seen like anonymous people speak and talking about how they were blackballed in Hollywood because they wouldn't conform to a certain power structure or uh, mm-hmm. how how things go. When you when you think about acting, like how. Like, how big do you want to be? Like, when we know you've done the plays and things like that, but is it your goal to be in some feature film? You know oh, what I'm yeah, most definitely. Like, this is something I want to do full-time. Yeah. Like, career-wise, yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, when, when you say that... I'm going thing, to do. Let me let me rephrase that. I'm going to do. <laughs> so what, what steps are you taking to get to this level? So, right, right now... Um, you know, as my, you know, director Tina Harris would always say, I'm, you know, you're always a college student when it comes to the acting field. You're always um, learning. So um, right now I'm, I'm in deeply uh, in the learning stage right now. So I'm learning to um, really dig out um, what I what I truly possess. And um, but as far as taking the steps, I'm, I'm doing short films. I'm even testing my own director skills with um, I have a couple of projects projects that I'm going to be putting out here soon um, 
just testing the waters, honestly, to see, you know, what I'm honestly capable of doing at this level, but um, also uh, taking classes and um, doing a lot of studying, you know, to, to, to enhance my gifts. Do you, uh, you mess with people, like jumping in and out of character random? Oh, definitely. Hmm. Oh, my. I, I did it a couple of nights ago. Like, I, I, I don't want to give it away, but I'm kind of doing a... Um, like a Halloween type um, Joker feel of a project, if you will, um, that's coming up. So um, I've even developed my own laugh, you know, for okay. that. And I, I did it <laughs> at the bar a um, couple nights ago. My friends was like, oh, I mean, they know what I'm, you know, getting into. They was like, they was like, damn, that was serious. They was like, I'm damn this. <laughs> but I mean, I I do it often. They they enjoy. I don't know if they enjoy it. Or not. I think they do. You gotta bite that shit. They, they <laughs> laugh with your friends. She's just crazy, bitch. I ain't gonna learn no more. <laughs> this is why we don't take you nowhere. But yeah, I I do. I love to hop in and out of character. It keeps it keeps me polished, if you will. Always <laughs> like, look, we um we always ask this in relation to. Like, I think, like, outside of Cambridge, we talk predominantly more about our music, but mm-hmm. so really just as far as just actresses and talking about the art of acting, we haven't had, like, you are first actress, put it like that. I feel so it, we got to twist up the um, question just a little bit by going okay. away from how we usually do. If you could work, well, this is what I'm going to ask this, because uh, we didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. If you have one actor or actress you could work with, with one person directing the film, who would those two people be? A director and a co-star, basically. Yeah. Ooh, that's a that's a deep question. I, if I had to choose, I would want to work with. And I'm not I'm I'm not a head over here heels girl about Denzel, but I would really like to work alongside Denzel. Co-star. Is it a fucking goat? So I mean, he make everybody I, look I, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying because, but it would have to be like this gangster type feel, you know, um, type movie. But um, and to somebody to direct it, that's deep. Cause it's a lot of good directors. I don't know. I'll just say somebody who worked with Denzel just to get you off there because you don't know our directors by now. Yeah. And so you just this is a lot of. Right. Anton Fuka. You fool with him. What do you write? He did, uh... What did he write? He did, is right and direct? I think Antoine Fuka did turn today. Do writers write and direct? So, I mean, yeah. some of them do. I mean, yeah. some of them do, but is that, is, that the, is that the... They, some, I think some tend to not to because it's too, it's, it's too major. Boat, right? No, okay, no, okay, okay, no. Because okay. you, I mean, it's, it's, it's two, wait, two different jobs. And you know, if you're doing both, you're you're doing a hell of a lot of work. Okay, and, I and, yeah, much. I yeah. And so, Fuka did just interrupt real quick. Uh-huh. He did the Slice and Killers Bait Training Day uh, Shooter. These are some of the notables. Olympus okay. and Fallen, both equalizer movies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I did not know that. Yeah, so and he worked with Disney a few times. That's yeah. why I came up with yeah. him. But as far as the director, the director, man, the director, man, he has to be an asshole sometimes. Because he's like, no, nah, you got to do this. He got to hurt feelings sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. I don't believe me. I've seen it happen before. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's one of them things that make you sit back and like, okay, let me check myself before yeah. he comes. You know, <laughs> yeah. hold on. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something I would love to work alongside Denzel because that's that's a whole nother level of what he's capable of doing. He's 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 on a whole nother level himself. Yeah. So you ever seen Fences? Fences. Yeah. That fucking movie is incredible. Yeah. It it's be it got a play setting. Mm-hmm. It got like a play setting. You gotta check that one. That's that's one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. But uh if you what's your favorite five movies? My, oh crap. Um, I love the classics. I love <laughs> Tina Turner, that the color purple. Um, I love, um, let's see. Color Purple, the worst movie ever. No, it is not. That's a classic. That is the awesome movie. It's the biggest movie. That's the awesome. I always say how that. I grew up off the movie. It ain't one part of the movie, man. 
That was the predecessor for uh, these Instagram quotes and shit. Mm. Okay. Oh. I'm just wearing smart to say anything you did to me or been done to you. Listen, I'm wearing Batman. That's a. It's just a classic. I grew up watching those over and over again. Dang, man. Over the whole fucking movie when she old. Oh, <laughs> 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 <Little rocking>, bitch. <laughs> Oh, man, um, um, let's see, I named, what, three? Uh, I don't, there's so many that I, I don't know. That's cool. What's your favorite yeah. part, Joy? You got a favorite yeah, part? Rush hour, Friday, next Friday, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to go with, um, I'm going with, uh, my, my, my last two is going in with, uh, Flight. And then uh train day. My favorite part. I'm a, I'm a movie. I'm a movie con, so I love movies. So when I say five and shit, my five then it changes is based on the day. But I go Carlitos Way, uh Scarface, Scarface, High Heartbeats, I like the Young Guns, and it's maybe maybe the Godfather. Like them, that's my fault. But I got some in the change of and shit. But I love the young guns. That's one of my favorite movies when I was a child. But I could throw a, a Deja Vu in here, Denzel movie, Deja Vu. Oh, yeah, uh, that, was, that was a good one. It, it's a lot of movies. But my father, it's like, you ask me this, the only thing that's consistent, oh, man, Usual Suspects. That's like, it's so, it's, <laughs> it's so many yeah. movies and shit. But them just my favorite five. And then the last interview type question, like, where do you see yourself at in five years? Mm, five you years. Like well, I, I'm going to be. Uh, I, I, I guess all the stars lined up perfectly for you, and you made all your dreams come true in the next five years. Realistically, where you gonna be? Doing what I love full time, and that's just acting. For sure. Yeah, that's a, that's full time. You know, I'm I'm making moves to free up my schedule so I can do. But I have a lot of things coming up in. Um, next year, um, you know, DeMarco plays goes on tour, so this is just the beginning. So I'm, sure. I'm definitely excited. Um, definitely a shout out to DeMarco, you know, for giving me the opportunity to work a lot, you know, work with him, you know. So he's he's an amazing writer, uh, amazing producer. So um, I, I couldn't be paired with anybody better. So and y'all about to do another run for the her life his secrets. Well, that the Her Lies His Secrets is going to be uh, on tour next year. Okay. So uh, I think the last one that we're doing here would be for Color Girls, which is in no, which is November second, um, and then we're doing Suffering in Silence in Cincinnati. Uh, I think that's in February. So and that would be the start of you know us getting on the road and you know kind of getting out of here. <laughs> and where is this like this for where is this for Color Girls? Where is this going to be at? Um, it's going to be at the University of Indianapolis at the Crystal DeHaan uh, Theater. Um, so, South Side, South Side. All right, you want to tell people where they can find that on social media? Yes, yes. So, you can find me on Instagram, Jasmine underscore V, that's T H E E dot actress. You can find me on Facebook under Jasmine Elizabeth. I have no Twitter, but those two are my name. <laughs> Uh, social media platform, so yeah, follow me. I thought she had a follow. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely, definitely enjoy having you here, man. Fantastic interview. Uh, you do you have so any much. like anything online like we can watch or anything, or we just gonna take your word that you can add? Um, I am going to start uh, posting some of my um, uh, some monologues and things like that online. Um, simply because I know some people have been requesting, you know, uh, you know, let me see what you got, you know. So I want people to be able to go to my page, especially since oh, yeah. it says Jasmine uh-huh. the Actress. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm just kind of getting my face out there with some of the modeling that I've been doing, um, uh, portraying different characters in, within photos. But um, my goal is to um, start posting some of my um, sky given talent uh, when it comes to my acting. Your there is there is a, there is a couple of videos on there though from the last production so. Oh yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. Are, where we can find it? Instagram. I'm talking on your Instagram. Yeah. My okay. Instagram, okay. Yeah. Anything you want to say, folks? Did you? Yeah, make sure y'all check out.
This episode is on episode 106, streaming on all no park. services. Streaming on yeah, no, 106, no park. Streaming on all services tomorrow, including the YouTube channel. And y'all can catch all these, all this coming your way, all this fire content, man, coming tomorrow. Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play, everything. Everything you can think of, whatever you use and listen to podcasts, or listen to music on, we're going to be on there. So make sure you tune in too. No conceited, nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thanks for having <laughs> me, guys. I enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to another yeah. fantastic show. Don't forget that we got Soul in the City coming out October the 12th. A fantastic yes, artist sir. in here ready to uh, croon, sing, do what it is they do. Uh, we have Victoria <laughs> Allison, uh, Terrence yes, Anderson, sir. Jamal White. Jamal White asked me, did we have Mike Stans? I think he's going <laughs> I said we might have one, man. You gotta relax, Usher. You wanna do all that moonwalking and shit. You gonna dance with the pole and shit. But we got Jamal White gonna turn up, and we have Cambria. It's definitely gonna be a show that you don't wanna miss. We have a ten dollar pre sale tickets, fifteen dollars at the door. Um, there will be drink specials. I'm looking forward to having a fantastic time. Um, I feel like oh, we have sponsorship packages ranging from twenty five to fifty dollars. To increase your marketing, your brand, you can find that in your couch seats or whatever. Um, if you want more info on that, you can contact us on what all it entails. We want to shout out to those people who've already bought their packages. Uh, the Valid Cop, um, Fry Design Studio, and C- CBA Promotions. We look forward to networking um, and building more people. Shout out to our favorite motherfucking Muslim Assad down there getting it. Uh, we catch y'all next week. Uh, one of the best podcasts you never heard of, Conceited Nobody. The Conceited Nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m.